Throughout history, human beings have cried out for freedom. Millions have fought and even died for it. But why? What is political freedom? Why should we care about it? Many peoples, from the Greeks to the Romans to the English and Scots to the American founders to the anti-colonial Indians and anti-apartheid South Africans, everyone has argued for freedom. People across different times, peoples and nations have understood that freedom is a core political good. Yet, today, less than 20% of the world's population live in free countries. There are four main political freedoms or rights that are fundamental to our democratic society. Freedom of religion and conscience, freedom of speech, freedom of association and freedom to own private property. Whether you are free or not, can be gauged by the extent to which you enjoy these rights. Freedom of religion and conscience is the freedom to inquire into the meaning of existence and live in accordance with your moral, philosophical and spiritual convictions, which are vital to the individual's formation and identity. Freedom of speech is the right to speak your mind without the fear of being punished by others. It is also the freedom not to speak, not to use language that others seek to impose on you. Freedom of association is the right to form and join groups with other people around a shared belief, cause or interest, and in turn for these groups to govern themselves according to their own rules and norms. And freedom to own property is the right to work for and keep your income and anything that you purchase with it. It is also the right to dispose of your property as you see fit, say by trading it for something else, donating it to charity or bequeathing it to your children as inheritance. Today, in the West, freedoms are not threatened by tyrants, kings or dictators. Instead, our freedoms are under increasing attack from legislators, technocrats and political activists who seek to suppress hard-won freedoms in order to promote their own agendas. Consider freedom of speech. There are increasing numbers of people who are censored on social media, lose their job or even taken to court simply for expressing an opinion that others find offensive. Rather than encouraging healthy dialogue and resilience to speech we find offensive or hurtful, we are now cancelling those we disagree with and enacting laws that punish people for expressing their views. Or take freedom of religion. Some people believe that traditional ideas of gender and sexuality should not have any presence in modern society, declaring them harmful and hateful. These traditional stances often align with religious teaching. Thus. We are increasingly seeing laws and workplace rules that prohibit expressing these views and living them out. Religious organizations like churches, schools and charities have also been prohibited from maintaining employment policies that require staff to adhere to the organization's religious principles. Or even consider the simple freedoms that were curtailed by governments during the COVID pandemic. Limits on when you could leave your house and where you could go vaccine compulsion, prohibitions on personal interactions and group assembly. Sometimes these rules were instituted with scant regard for parliamentary process. Often they were the fiat of appointed experts. Whether you agree with a high level of caution or not, the fact is that our political freedoms were constrained in unprecedented ways during the pandemic. Yet these freedoms should not be taken for granted. An underlying threat to our freedom is our society's increasing risk aversion or a culture of fear. We are often being told to be afraid, whether it be of disease, economic crises, climate change, racism or so-called harmful words and ideas. We need to be attentive to the claims invoked by politicians and expert bureaucrats to justify limiting freedoms and to the emotive words that understandably stoke fear, emergency, Crisis. Harmful. Their claims may of course be well meant, but what about when these politicians and experts are wrong? What if their analysis is flawed? What if they don't know what's actually good for us? What if their ideological interventions do more harm than good? C.S. Lewis once wrote, Of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It would be better to live under robber barons than under omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep. His cupidity may at some point be satiated. But those who torment us for our own good 
will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. Freedom is not just important because it guarantees that we can live our lives as we see fit without others controlling us. Across time and geography, the fundamental freedoms of speech, association, religion and private property have been proven to promote amazing progress in society, to constructive, secure and prosperous lives for many. A free society houses a healthy clash of ideas and allows better ideas to prevail to the benefit of all. A free society leaves precious room for open and earnest inquiry about the biggest questions of human existence, while encouraging virtuous living and philanthropic action. This is why freedoms are worth fighting for. We hope you enjoy this series on foundational freedoms. To help you explore these more deeply, check the reading list in the description below and the recommended videos on your screen. And please subscribe to the channel, like the video, click the bell icon and share with others who may benefit from this content.